What's going on everybody? It's Captain Gabriel and I'm uh, pleased to be able to say that that is my title now. I actually am a captain now. I finished my training for upgrade um, around September 9th was, no, sorry, October 9th was my final check ride in the flight simulator, the, the full motion flight sim. Um, and of course my last video that I actually posted was about being awarded my upgrade. Uh, so I've gone through I've had all the training done, done all the simulator assessments, all the ground examinations, all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a captain now. So I'm about 60 hours in, I guess now, to my uh, pilot in command um, captain career with my uh, current airline that I'm with, and it's still the same airline, um, which is one of the largest regional carriers here in the United States of America. Um, very, very happy to be here. I love the United States of America, great country. There's just so much variety in the flying that we do here from high mountainous terrain to beautiful sunny California to blizzard conditions, minus 30 degrees Celsius, um, icy runways, heavy snow, you name it. Uh, I've I've been through it all and that's one of the great things that you get here in this country that you don't get you know I'm from Australia you don't get this in Australia the flying in Australia is just very very limited very boring um, and so I'm very happy that I'm, I'm here doing this so uh, such a blessing that I can I can be here and I, I wake up and I, I you know I wake up every day and I realize that and I pray every night thanking God for you know what I've got in my life which is um, you know my family and my career really um, Everything's good. My little baby girl, Amber, she's seven and a half months old now. She's crawling around like a terror. She's climbing up the whole flight of stairs in our little two-story townhouse. Um, we moved to base. I drove like 19 hours to Colorado, pretty much non-stop, um, with a car full of everything, um, including our four cats. And then I flew back the same day after the move um, to pick up my wife and my baby. And then, so Amber... It was cool. She got to fly for the very first time outside of mum's womb. Um, we flew to Las Vegas and then we flew to um, my base in Colorado. So it was really great. And she got like a little certificate from Southwest Airlines as well. And, and the Southwest Airlines crew were, were really awesome and, and lots of fun. I'm here in Los Angeles, uh, El Segundo. It's about um, maybe about a five or six minute drive from the airport. They put put us pretty close. And the good thing I like about this place uh, or this hotel is my view is um, the Pacific Ocean. So I can see Australia. Hi, mum. <laughs> Hope you're doing great. I miss you. Haven't seen you for many, many years now. Uh, the last time I tried to go back to Australia, I think it was Christmas Eve 2019 when United Airlines put cargo on instead of the non-rev passengers. So that was a bit disappointing. But uh... And then, of course, COVID hit. Um, I hope everyone's doing well throughout that. I, things are looking better. Things are looking much, much better, especially uh, in the United States of America. I'm not really too familiar about what's going on around the world. Um, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, I hope it's better. I hope it's better. I know Australia's picking up. Um, how's everything else in Europe and everything? Comment below if you like. Um, I hope it's going well. If you're just getting into flight training, then I think it's a great time to get into it now. Um, I think you're going to have a very, very successful career. There's going to be huge demands for pilots. There, there is currently. Um, but, you know, certainly in the next 10 years, there's going to be this, this huge demand. So if you get into it now... Uh, you can probably get to the airlines in the next three to four years if you work hard at it. Uh, get an instructor rating, do your instructor hours and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I like to suggest though that you don't rush and miss out on experiences to get to the airlines. Uh, try and get as much experience as you can and enjoy each day that you're doing whatever you're doing, whether it's in the outback flying. The Aboriginals about, which I did, which I really missed that actually. It was such a great experience to meet the Indigenous lovely people and just flying out to their communities and a great deal of respect for what our Australian Aboriginals have gone through in the history of, of Australia. Uh, so, yeah, great deal of respect to our Indigenous. I often... I, I, I used to love... I, I'd fly out to these communities to pick up a student you know, a young boy or girl who needed to go to school in, in the big smoke. 
And, you know, so I'd fly for like three hours out to a community. Um, and a lot of the times the parents would just drive out and they'd be like, oh, hey, little Jimmy, you know, he's not coming to, he's not coming to school. He's not feeling well. And that's how they kind of sound. I mean, I'm trying to do my best impersonation. I hope I'm not offending anybody, but, uh, you know, they'd come out and I'd be like, oh, hi, no worries. All good. I've got my flight hours. It's all good. I'm paying the tax. We're paying the tax, but it's okay. Getting flight experience from it. And, um, you know, I built my hours in the outback. I, you know, if it wasn't for the Australian Aboriginals, there wouldn't be as much flying that there is in the Australian outback. So um, just purely from an aviation perspective and, and a career aspect, you know, it's, uh, um, things that have happened are a blessing, I guess. Anyway, I'm rambling on. I'm rambling on. And I tend to do that. I don't have scripts. I hate doing the script thing. Just trying to speak what's on my mind at the time. Um, anyway, I'm on to my like third coffee now. I absolutely love coffee. <sighs> what's uh, what's going on, everybody? Well, like I said, I'm 60 hours in to my captaincy. I have, or I'm known as a green captain or a baby captain because the FAA puts a cap uh, on captains with less than 100 hours of pilot and command experience that you have to adjust your instrument uh, approach landing minimums. You have to add half a mile visibility um, or a hundred, and 100 feet to the, the ceiling so that if the weather on the chart plus that 100 or half a mile uh, is uh, below that, then you, you can't shoot the approach. So there's a little bit of a restriction there. And so far from what I've experienced, that has affected me because on my last trip that I did, it was a three day, start of day one, uh, the weather went below my minima. I had to do a go around and then um, I basically had to divert to an unplanned alternate because the planned alternate that I had was not suitable as well. It was below the, my minima. Pardon me. So luckily, you know, we diverted, we had, had gas to do it. We, diverted to an unplanned alternate that had good weather, landed and all that sort of stuff. And then, then the weather came in there. It's a, it's a pretty cool story if you stay on listening. The weather, you know, I guess back in back in Denver, Colorado was still bad. That's where we were going, our original destination. And so we're at this alternate and um, the weather is still bad in Denver. So we can't take off yet because it's uh, below my landing minima and it's such a short flight that you're not allowed to take off. You know, typically with in a, I think it's a, an hour's distance, including taxi out you um you can't basically dispatch or drop the brake to attempt to go out there if the weather's below the landing minima so we waited and waited and waited we we got a new release we got we got gas passengers you know they've been on the plane for quite a while now they've been on the plane for like three hours and my company's policy is you have to offer the ability to get the passengers off if they want to one passenger ended up leaving and, and didn't come back on the flight, um, but about 15 to 20 folks wanted to get off and that was fine. I, there wasn't much ground staff there, so I sort of escorted them over to the building and a couple of them wanted to chat and everything like that. And and also, I, you know, when we landed at the alternate, I, you know, went out into the cabin and I like to actually do that. You go into the cabin and bring up the, the PA system and actually make a public address explaining the best you can the reason why you've uh, diverted and, and all that sort of stuff. Just fill them in. I, I find that the more details you give, the the better the passengers feel about the situation. They they sort of, um, yeah, they, they seem happier. I've, I've noticed some, when I was a first officer, some captains would just stay behind the cockpit door. They wouldn't really say much. And then, you know, the flight attendants having to deal with all that. So you want to, you know, work together as a crew and, and really get that crew environment set up where, um, you're all helping each other and it's a big help to the flight attendant who has to be in the back of the plane facing all these potentially angry passengers uh, that if you get up there and make an announcement uh, and you're you know, in, in the passengers' eyes and, and making that uh, contact with them, they really, really appreciate it. So, um, yeah, we got the new release, we got fuel, I got the passengers back on, we went to, we went to go de-ice, which is about 100 metres in front of the aircraft, dropped the brake, and then I got a fault message from one of the anti-skid systems on the plane. It's like ABS in your car. Basically, it was saying it wasn't working as it should. So, um, set the brake again. Uh, basically, 
put the aircraft out of service, you have to write it up as a maintenance, uh, basically like a maintenance write up. Put the aircraft out of service, I rang up maintenance, uh, kind of like a 15 minute procedure. I had it before on a previous trip, so I was aware of it. I just, you know, made an announcement quickly as well to the folks. Captain, the, see Captain speaking, uh, unfortunately, just as we've dropped the brake here, we've got a little fault message that's come up. Uh, from my experience, it's about a 15 minute fix. We just need to get maintenance on the phone to run through a few sort of reset procedures. Just fill them in on that. And then, um, you know, so I did that, called maintenance, pulled a few circuit breakers uh, on panel one and two. One, one's behind the captain, two's behind the first officer. And um, did that procedure. That, that was all good. Back in service. We're going to wait because, like, the aircraft gets put out of service when I write something up, and it needs to be put back in service before we can release the brakes again. So um, got that done, went in de ice to anti ice. And then after we finished that, we start to taxi out to the runway. I'm looking outside, I'm like, oh, this snow looks pretty, pretty heavy. And anyone that flies the CRJ-200 knows that the CRJ-200, you're not allowed to take off in heavy snow. Um, it's just not designed, the wings are not designed for, for heavy snow operations. The, I think it's something to do with the engines as well. I'm not, I'm not actually too sure, I'll be honest with you. But uh, in either case, it says in our manuals, you're not allowed to do it. So we just do what the uh, SOPM says, Standard Operating Procedures and Limitations Imposed by the manufacturer of the aircraft. Um, so I elected to taxi out to um, to the runway and then hold hold in the run-up bay. Um, fuel at that, at that stage was, you know, I was already looking a little bit low, um, but I thought to myself, well, I'll keep the engines running just in case this snow blows through quickly or just, just until the time when, when tower tells me it's, um, you know, moderate snow, then I can get out of there, you know what I mean? So I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting, but fuel is getting less and less and less. And long story short, gets down to our, our minimum fuel, Minto, uh, minimum takeoff fuel. Um, so at that stage, you can't do anything. You have to taxi back to the gate and try it all again. So that's what we did. We went back to the gate, refueled. Uh, passengers, again, wanted to get off. So they were allowed to. The weather wasn't clearing up anytime soon. I let them get off and go stretch their legs. Um, yeah, but... Uh, and then, you know, eventually the, the weather got better at our airport. We got the folks back on, had the, had the gas, went and de-iced again, anti-ice, and then we got out of there and flew to our destination. So uh, that was just one of my days. And, um, yeah, it was, a pretty, it was a pretty long one. That whole day ended up being 15 hours duty, you know. Uh, we went into our, I guess, our extension for our duty limitation because uh, Part 121 operations, we operate under the, uh, right under the FAR 117, uh, flight duty period limitations, which uh, stipulates all the uh, amount of flight time you can do actually in the plane, and then the amount of duty you can do, which basically involves anything to do with uh, the uh, the day that you're you're in. So from your report start time right until you know you complete the last flight at the end of the day, type of thing. So, and then depending on what time you started in the morning, that will dictate. Um, your your maximum duty period and then there's ex these extensions that go on for that but anyway so it turned, it turned out to be a 15 hour day for us really long day didn't eat anything um except for breakfast that day just because i'm silly and i left my lunch pail at home which had all my food in it <laughs> um but my flight crew didn't even eat as well so and there were there wasn't too many opportunities to actually get food for, for a couple of reasons we're at little outstations for throughout the day there but um you know, at the same time, you want to try and get the day done so you're not having to cancel flights. Uh, <laughs> some pilots will be like, I don't care, I'm going to get some food, I don't care if the plane's delayed even further. But, you know, I try to I try to keep the operation, get the operation catching up as quick as we can. Um, but at this, in saying that, I wasn't hungry, but if I, if I were hungry and starving, then I would have to uh, go get some food. So, you know, I checked out, checked throughout the day how my flight attendant's doing and my first officer as well it's part of the whole being a captain taking care of your crew and if they need something to eat as well then you know you can always run out there to get something for them that's how i've had to do it before um yeah so that was that was just one of the days i've got some more stories to tell you which i'm hopefully going to put together some videos just about my daily experiences as we go along yesterday in fact was i i i swear to god i think it was the first day that everything went smoothly because every single flight, every single trip, something has not gone smoothly so far for me in my first hundred hours as a captain. And there was a, 
another captain who told me, she said to me, oh yeah, well, you know you're going to experience like everything in your first hundred hours. And I was like, oh, really? She was right. But it doesn't happen to everybody. I've like asked some of my mates, you know, and how they're doing with it. And they're like, oh, I haven't seen anything. Like everything's been going good. So yeah. I guess I'm just kind of unlucky, but in, at the same time, it's uh, it's great to get all this stuff out of the way early on because it's a, it's a steep learning curve, but it's very exciting as well. You just kind of never know what the day's going to hold for you, but it's a lot of fun. Really, really enjoying it. The being in the left seat of the aircraft, you get uh, the ability to turn the tiller wheel on the left hand side there, so your hands on the tiller, which gives you the the greater tuning of the nose wheel up to about 70, 70 degrees, uh, left or right, and you know on the thrust lever so and then your feet are on the brakes of course um so that's that's part of the fun different flows for captain as well which is which is a lot of fun as well um but just it's just a whole different experience and it's so, so rewarding each day that i'm in the cockpit and i just have a great sense of achievement which is which is amazing yeah um but anyway yeah beautiful day here in uh los angeles three legs today uh we're going off to uh little place in Oregon later and then back to Los Angeles and then later on we end up in a, another beautiful coastal airport in Los Angeles as well so just a shorter layover tonight about 13 to 14 hours not too long the one here has been 24 hours which which I really I enjoy those because you get time to really just do the things you don't get to do at home you know now that I'm a father and um, my time at home is spent mostly with my family so I don't really get spare time to do anything I'd like to do whatever that might be which is currently I'll share this with you guys um, I am in the process of being a professional karaoke singer <laughs> I don't know oh the video stopped there I like to sing so what I do is I bring I actually bring my mixing equipment and my microphone with me so that's the microphone I use but uh, yeah, I just like to do little recordings in my rooms, like something I like to do. Everyone's got their own little thing, I guess. But uh, yeah, maybe one day, maybe one day you'll hear me on YouTube or something like that. Yeah, don't know, maybe I can do a sample for you now. Fly me to the moon and let me play amongst the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, baby, kiss me. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, guys, I hope you're all taking care of yourselves out there. All the best for your ambitions. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. All right, take it easy. God bless you. See ya.